When we're landing, we need to know our final approach speed. And this is what you're going to hold until the runway's threshold, and this airspeed primarily depends on aircraft weight. So the heavier you are, the faster your final approach speed is going to be, and vice versa. There are charts in the operating manuals to calculate this, such as the one on the left, but there's a simple version in the official DCS manual for the F5 which we can use. So to calculate your final approach speed, you use the formula up the top there. You start with a basis of 145 knots, and then include a fuel calculation. Then you add the modifiers, such as gun ammunition, no flaps or a single engine landing, and half of the wind gust factor if there is one. So in the example, if you had 2,400 pounds of fuel with gun ammunition, a no flap landing, and the wind gusting between 5 and 15 knots, they'll give you a final approach speed of 172 knots. It's important to note that everything there is constant except for the fuel. So as the fuel changes, the weight's going to change, and that's going to change your final approach speed as a result. At your final approach speed, there's an optimum angle of attack to fly at. And there are two ways that AOA is represented in the F5. First, there's an AOA indicator, which will show your AOA all the time in units of AOA with the needle. Then on the right hand side of the 3 o'clock position, there's an index. This is equal to 15.8 units, and this is the optimum AOA during a normal approach. Remember that you're going to be controlling your angle of attack using your pitch. The second is the AOA indexer. This is a visual display of the AOA indicator. The indexer turns on when your landing gear extends. This way you can reference it while you're on approach. And the indexer is going to show you one of three basic conditions and how to correct for them. The indexer will show you as being either low speed, on speed, or high speed for your approach. To improve your approach, you should reference the indexer and then apply pitch corrections so the indexer will reflect an on speed condition while also adjusting your power. Adjusting the power will help you hold the descent rate you want so you can maintain a glide path all the way until a touchdown. This is the pitch for airspeed and power for altitude concept. So for this example in a low speed condition, you're going to see a red chevron. And see how the red chevron is pointing down? This is telling you that for the angle of attack, you're too slow. So it's telling you to get the nose down. So by using your pitch, you'll lower the nose to reach the on speed angle of attack. This is going to increase your airspeed, but also your vertical speed downwards. So you'll need to adjust your power by increasing it to stay on the glide slope. This will help reduce the higher vertical airspeed induced by lowering the nose. So on the on-speed condition, you see a green donut. This is telling you that your angle of attack is optimal, so for the speed you're at, you are on speed. And if you're at your final approach speed already, then you don't need to make any big adjustments in pitch or power. But if you're not at your final approach speed, you can make small adjustments in pitch and power to help you remain on speed until you are. In the high speed condition, you're going to see a yellow chevron. And notice that the yellow chevron points up. This is telling you to get the nose up. So to adjust your pitch, you'll raise the nose to reach on speed angle of attack. This is going to decrease your airspeed and the vertical speed downwards. So you counteract that with the power by decreasing it to help you stay on glide slope and also increase the lower vertical speed which is induced by raising the nose. The last thing we'll look at before jumping in the airplane is a basic visual landing pattern. The picture on the left is an example of the initial and pitch, also known as a run and break. It uses a high speed approach with a brake turn to bleed off extra airspeed and you have to do a quick configuration for landing as well. If you're in a formation, the flight lead will break over the runway numbers while each wingman breaks sequentially at timed intervals after the flight lead. This is the standard way you're going to recover your fighter at an airfield to make a visual approach. The first step when coming into land is to tell uh, ATC that you're inbound, so you can use the comm switch for that. Springfield, 1-1, one, one, inbound. We're going to be aiming to land on runway 2 on the left, which is the one on the left hand side there. And currently we're at 5,000 feet, but we want to descend down to be at the pattern altitude. And um, the pattern altitude is going to be 1,500 feet AGL. So because the elevation of the airport is 1,800 feet, we add 1,500 feet to that. And that means our pattern altitude is going to be 3,300 feet. And we want to be at that altitude by the time we reach around 5 nautical miles. 
And uh, because we are landing on runway 21, I've set up the runway heading bug and the CDI needle to reflect um, an approach for runway 21. So as we continue the descent here, we're going to calculate our fuel state and then we're going to use that to calculate our approach speed. So looking at the fuel gauge, we can see that there's a thousand pounds of fuel on the left side and on the right side. So this gives us a total fuel state of 2,000 pounds. And then when you run the formula, it's going to give you an approach speed of 155 knots. And this is the airspeed you want to maintain while you're on final approach. But we still have around 10 miles to go until we get to the runway. Uh, so we'll have a look at the before landing flow now. So continuing our descent down, uh, the altimeter is set to the local pressure of 2995 and we're going to level off at 3300 feet in a sec. Uh, fuel cross feed is not running, so that's fine. Hydro pressures are both good and our airspeed is at 300 knots. In real life, approach and tower are on separate frequencies, but in this case they're on the same frequency and I can just use the comm switch to request a landing. Springfield, 1-1, one, one. request landing. Springfield, 1-1, one, one. clear to land, runway 2-1, wind 2-1-2 two, two, at 4 meters per second. So now that we've been given clearance to land, we're going to turn the landing light on to reflect that. And we're going to maintain 300 knots and pattern altitude here as we continue on the initial. So moving to the left side of the seat here just to give a better view. Um, I am going to do a break a little bit after the numbers. And I'm going to choose that darker spot off to the side there as my reference point next to the tower. And this is because I won't be able to see the point over the runway. So I'm using that point off to the side to indicate um, when I'm going to break. Now when you're watching a point like this, you may have a tendency to drop the nose. So remember to keep that in mind and continue cross-checking your altimeter. Alright, so we're coming up on our point. We can begin rolling and enter the turn, which is going to be around 3G. And uh, you don't need to touch the power on this, you can leave it where it is. We can just keep the pull going to reduce our airspeed and maintain our altitude. And once we pass below 250 knots, the auxiliary intake door is going to open. And we'll need to start adding nose-up trim. Gonna get the wings level, drop the landing gear, and we'll look out to the side and check our spacing to the runway. The runway should be just above the sidewinder, so that looks pretty good. There's three green showing the gear is down and locked, and we're going to roll off the perch here uh, when we hit that 45 degree line away from the runway. Now we're going to enter the turn and the bump up the power by about 10%. Um, this will help you get to the descent rate of around 2,000 feet a minute and you can adjust your pitch to get yourself to an on-speed condition. Uh, you want to be doing at least 165 knots in this base to final turn and you're also going to be um, using that nose up trim to help take away the control pressure. Now as we start getting ready to roll our wings level here, um, as you start reducing that angle of bank you're going to have to reduce the power to prevent yourself speeding up too much. Landing gear is down and locked, flaps are full, and we're continuing to fly towards our aiming point at the beginning of the runway. Uh, approach speed is good at 155 knots and we're on speed. We start approaching the aiming point. We're going to slowly bring it up into the flare and reduce the power to idle. And we're going to touch down around the 500 foot marker. On touch down you can hold the nose up to get that aerodynamic braking going for you. You can slowly let the nose come down and then you can start applying the brakes. Now remember that the F5 doesn't have an anti-skid system, so you can't just go full brake and expect it to handle it for you. You have to be smooth in your application, and if you do find yourself skidding, just release the brakes a little bit, and then reapply them, and um, that will help recover your braking action. So when you're at the higher air speeds, you can apply a little bit of braking, and as you get slower and slower, you can progressively apply uh, more and more braking action, and it's going to prevent you from skidding. And since we're slower than 65 knots now on the ground, um, we can start using the nose wheel steering. This is done by holding down the S key or whatever you've got bound to your HOTAS and uh, this way you'll be able to make those tight turns. And I'm going to take the first exit here to go to the shutdown area. So I'm holding down that nose wheel steering button and uh, using the rudder to follow the line. And that way we're going to get off the runway and then we can look at the after landing flow. All 
right, so once we cross these yellow lines here, we're officially clear of the runway. And um, once we get past that point, we can begin the after landing flow. So looking at the cabin pressure, it's the same as outside. So we don't need to use that ram dunt switch. We can just turn the pitot heat off and uh, open the canopy. And we can turn the radar off and extend the speed brake out to the full position. Give that a few seconds. And we can retract the flaps to the up position and turn the landing slash taxi light on because we're daytime, we don't need it. And uh, there is a caution which popped up and that was because we opened the canopy and so because that's associated with what we did, we can just clear that and then continue taxiing to the shutdown area. Right, so now we're taxiing along, we're going to move into the parking position before we go through the shutdown. It's just going to be this next rivet and up here on the right. And uh, we're going to hold down the nose while steering as usual, this way we can make that tight turn. Don't want to make the turn too quick, just enough to get us around. Keep ourselves on the line. And if it was night time, you'd turn off the taxi lights so you don't blind any ground crew trying to marshal you in. You can start applying more brakes, bring the power back to idle, and then come to a smooth stop, and we can look at the shutdown flow. So now we're in the parking position, ready to shut down. We're going to hold down the tow brakes and use the command menu using backslash to talk to the ground crew and we were asked them to get the wheel chocks placed. Chief, place the wheel chocks. Copy. Wheel chocks are now in place. So now we can just release the tow brakes and then we can start shutting down all the unguarded switches. So we can turn the radio off, turn the tack end off, turn the roar off. As you move down, checking to make sure everything's in the right position. Oxygen, we can turn that off. Turn the uh, IFF off. And starting on the left side, get the counter measures, the dampers, and the radar, which you would get if you didn't do it already. Then we can shut the engines down. And once the engines are shut down, you can cage the standby attitude indicator. So you'll hold down left click and use the mouse wheel to cage it. And then coming back to the right side, we would shut down the internal lights if we had them, as well as the external lights now that the engines are off. And then you just get the battery master. And that completes the shutdown for the F5. Now if you wanted to download this PDF, um, there's a link in the video description where you can do that. And uh, it also includes a kneeboard version. So if you wanted to use the kneeboard in game, or if you're using virtual reality and you want to use these flows, then you can do that as well. Now if you like this new DCS content from me, or if you want to see other cockpit workflows, uh, be sure to let me know in a comment. And uh, you can remember you can be a subscriber and use that notifications button so you'll see new videos as they're released. But until next time, remember to fly safe and check your six.